What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky Pete back with all the news. After week 17 of our Los Angeles Crusaders franchise, the Crusaders picked up a win and moved to set or 13 and 3 on the season. And things definitely went well in that final game. No injuries. Uh, there's really no point in doing that. I'm not too concerned about the little amount of points we'll pick up from there. Uh, but yeah, things are going good. Let's check out around the league. Colin Kaepernick winning MVP of the NFL for the 49ers. You know, as a Niner fan, I love to see that. There are no draft stories. Mostly what we're going to focus on today is if we ended up winning the conference or if the Texans held on and picked up a victory in their final game. And then we'll check out the stats from the uh, entire season and look at the Week 17 awards. During the wild card video, we'll check out all of those games and checking out all the, the uh, player awards for the season. That's how that's probably going to be planned out. Um, let's go ahead and find out the Texans did indeed uh, win their last game. So if we are to see them in the conference championship game, they will have the home field advantage. We really kind of screwed up with the late loss in the season to the Chiefs. And we are going to be paying for it by playing a road game if the cards were to unfold that way. If we were to win our games and the Texans were to win their games. Um, and you know what? It looks like it's going to be another intense showdown in the NFC too. And now the Buccaneers have kind of worked their way up here uh, with the Eagles. That's another interesting one. And then of course the Broncos. Winners of six straight. Another team to look out for. And because we did end up losing out that number one spot, I believe... The Broncos are a team we're going to have to see fairly early on in the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. So a lot of things kind of went wrong with that loss. Injury report, I think we are okay outside of the two previous injuries. Yep. And uh, I was really happy with Roy Harris. Defensive tackle, I'm a little bit more concerned about. You know, the Chargers ran it all over us in that game. DeMarco Murray was having a monster game. And that's something to keep an eye on as we enter into the... Uh, Enter into the playoffs against better competition. Weekly awards, week 17. What do we got? Carson Wells, 26 and 34, 323 yards, four touchdowns for him. Linder for the Buccaneers, 11 tackles and an interception for him. Pearson for the Titans, two tackles, two interceptions and a touchdown. And Johnny Manziel, 25 of 33, 320 yards and four touchdowns for the Browns. Again, the yearly awards we will get to in the next video, the wild card news video. Uh, for now, we're just going to check out the stats from the entire season. Obviously, the Crusaders did great in some areas. Oh, we do have one more thing to check on first. One more thing to check on. Oh, wait. That was right. The NFL sacks record. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Let's check it out. And Khalil Mack has taken over. Now, we've, we've known he had the record. From real life, but we didn't know if somebody else in this uh, franchise mode had beat him out. Or I couldn't remember anyway. But nope, Khalil Mack is now the NFL record for most sacks in the season. And uh, 2019 for the Los Angeles Crusaders with 27 smashing the old record there. Definitely got to love that. That is awesome to see for the Crusaders fans. All right, let's go ahead and check out the season stats now. And we will do this for our team. Uh, and then go to the NFL. Our team, obviously, Stuart Denny struggled greatly. The sophomore slump year, just not a good year for him. 26 interceptions is just way too many way too many interceptions over the amount that would be considered too many interceptions. Like, just not a good season from him at all. Now, he did end the season with an 87.6 quarterback rating. He did find his way into the end zone 29 times. But overall, you know, we weren't too happy with him. McRoy uh, played just a little bit for the Crusaders and filled in nicely. Running the ball, Devin Golden, 1,500 yards, 5.4 yards of carry, and 11 touchdowns for him. King with 4.8 yards of carry, 789 yards. Nearly uh, or over 150 yards for Motes, the rookie from Appalachian State. He also had 4.8 yards of carry, two touchdowns for him. Uh, Denny, 3.7 yards and a touchdown per carry. Kaysen Dobbs, 9 carries, good for 7.6 yards and a touchdown. And who could forget Chauncey Green, 11 carries on the season, 8 of those into the end zone for him. Shakir Gaten leading our team in catches with 64, 886 yards for him. Julius Baker, number 2 with 50 and 801 yards. So we had 3 receivers get over 800 yards. I am pretty happy with that. Uh, Keiston Mack, 45 catches over 800 yards, three touchdowns for him. Yakob Moody, definitely, you know, 
Didn't give us the season we were hoping for. Um, however, you know, one, our passing attack is really spread out. And two, we didn't sign him to do well in the regular season. We signed him to step up in the playoffs. We are hoping that he can be one of those cogs that helps us get to that championship game and, uh, and eventually win it. And so whatever happened in the regular season with him, I'm not too concerned. It's what happens in the playoffs is, is the reason we brought in Yakov Moody. So that'll be interesting to see. Devin Golden doing a good job out of the backfield. Chase Cross with six touchdowns for the Crusaders. And that's actually tied with Shakir Gaten for the lead. Our two five seven guys are doing well. Julius Baker with five. Yakov Moody four. Keiston Mack three. Devin Golden two. McNeil, Green, and Clay each with one. Um, moving on from the blocking there. Defensively, Reynard Ray leading our team in tackles by a mile. 135 for him. We already know the 27 sacks from Khalil Mack, 12 for Matthew McCown, 11 for Keegan Gibson, who will be injured in the playoffs. That is a huge loss. Bola Asante also injured for the playoffs. Two huge losses here, 20 sacks on the season between them. Uh, Brandon Spikes with four, Shelby Harris with four, Reynard Ray with three, Deshae Campbell with three, Hickman with three, and Roy Harris, a rookie who really kind of played limited snaps, also got three. I'm excited to see what he can do. In the uh, postseason for us. Deshae Campbell leading the team with four interceptions. Reynard Ray with three. Two for Mosley and Mucamara and Anders James. Fumbles forced. Obviously, we know Khalil Mack at the top of this list with five. Three for Spikes. Two for McCown and two for Keegan Gibson. Fumbles recovered. Two for Mack. A few players with one. No blocks. We do have a safety, and that is Keegan Gibson. And then touchdowns. One for Zeke Hickman and one for Deshae Campbell. Almost two. He almost returned another one there. Kicking 19 to 20, long of 47 for the rookie Chuck Vaughn. Marquette King, another monster season. Kick returns, 22.1 yards per return for Chase Cross. Punt returns, 12.4 yards for him there. And a touchdown. Let's go ahead and check out the NFL stats now and see who kind of led the way throughout the NFL this season. And Derek Carr with the best quarterback rating, 124.7. Uh, threw for less than 3,000 yards, though. That's kind of interesting there. Uh, you know, he was obviously doing a great job playing very efficiently, uh, but not necessarily getting a whole lot of yards for the Eagles. 33 touchdowns, only four interceptions for him. The MVP, Colin Kaepernick, 3,500 yards, 37 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 37 touchdowns, six for Manziel. Uh, A.J. McCarron with 33-3. and three. Wow, that is incredibly efficient as well. And again, that Texans team is really clicking on all cylinders. A lot of weapons for them to use. Chaz Jenkins, 35 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 43 touchdowns for Blake Bortles. He did throw 18 interceptions, but still, 43 is a monster number. 32 and 9 for Griffin, uh, 38 and 14 for Galvin, 31 and 13 for Brian Vasquez, and those are pretty much a lot of the big names. 34 and 21. For Mitch Farrell, uh, Tremaine Small into the season, 32 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. Running the ball, Carlos Hyde leading the way, 1,500 yards for him, uh, 4.7 yards a carry and 8 touchdowns. Devrin Golden was right behind him, so close to taking over that yards. And had it not been for the injuries, you know, here and there, he probably would have 5.4 yards a carry for Devrin Golden and 11 touchdowns. LaShawn McCoy over 1,500 yards as well. And 11 touchdowns for him. Adrian Peterson, 5.4 yards a carry, under 1,500 yards with 14.53. Seven touchdowns for him, seven for Alfred Morris. Doug Martin with 13 touchdowns, 14 for Le'Veon Bell, 16 for Michael, which is pretty crazy considering how good of a season we know uh, Carlos Hyde had as well. So 24 rushing touchdowns between those two guys. Part of the reason why the Niners are currently looking like the most dominant team in the NFL. Le'Veon Bell with 14. Martin, 13. Pierce, 13. Again, another good duo here uh, for the Buccaneers. 13 for Azur. 12 for Hill and uh, Ellington. McCoy, Golden, and Dunbar each with 11. Quite a few guys here with 10 as well. Receiving the ball, Jawan Sellers working with Tremaine Smallwell. 130 catches for him. Jamison for the Panthers with 129. Craig with 114, so the Panthers throwing the ball an awful lot, and it is paying off for him. Matt Ward, the former Bronco, looking good in a number one receiving spot. 113 catches and 13 touchdowns for him. Uh, Demarius Thomas with 15 for the Broncos. Again, his former teammate, 13. A.J. Green, 13. Justin Blackman, 13. Also on the... Um, 
the Jaguars there. And then Torrey Smith with 13. Sammy Watkins and Bruton the Crouton each with 12. Aaron Dobson 11. Josh Gordon 11. And Vernon Davis with 11. And Greg Jennings with 10. Uh, blocking. And we'll move past that. Defensively, Donald Butler leading the way and tackles 172 uh, 72 with, for him and Luke Keekley. Darrell Washington 162. Um... Shepard 158, Shazir 155, Stephen Tulloch 154. Sacks, our guys might be glitched away from here, but we already know how our team did. Alec Ogletree leading the rest of the NFL with 10. Alden Smith tied with, uh, with Ogletree for 10. 9 for Ingram, 8 for Lemonois, Junior Gallette with 7, and Trent Cole with 7. Interceptions, 9 for Cortez Allen and Kyle Fuller. Great seasons for Tim. Uh, Fuller's definitely a guy we're going to have to keep an eye on for the playoffs. Maybe even Allen as well. I don't know if they made it or not. Matt Elam with eight for the Ravens. Casey Hayward with seven. Jimmy Ward, Morris Claiborne, uh, Devin McCourty, and Duke Williams each with six. Uh, we'll check out fumbles forced and all that as well. See what we got here. Five fumbles forced for Andrew Jackson. Uh, four for Jaquan. Williams, I don't know if I said that one right. I apologize. And 4 for Navarro Bowman. Fumbles recovered. 2 for Andrew Jacksons. 2 for Bowman. 2 for Mathau. And 2 for Luke Keekley. Blocks. 2 blocks for CJ Mosley. Wow. 1 for Keekley. 1 for Burrell. 1 for Anthony Barr. 1 for Dominic Rogers Camardi. And 1 for Peterson. I have never seen a block in Madden 15. I'm just going to say that, by the way. Safeties. 1 for Jonathan Woods. We already know about our guy. And we scouted him the, the year he came out. I remember that. Uh, touchdowns to Shea, Cam, Anthony Barr, Dominic Rogers, Camardi, Alteron, Werner, Raheem Moore, Jonathan Cyprian, Barry Pearson, Buchanan, Houston, Sheed, Ward, Poole, and Elam all tied with one. <laughs> That's a lot of people there. Kicking Stephen Hoshka leading the way. 41 uh, field goals for him. Uh, we'll just check out field goal percentage. 100% for Matt Perez. Uh, long field goal, only 50 yards. Tucker and Scobie both tied for that. And then we have, uh, where's Chuck Vaughn? Where's Chuck Vaughn on this list? I feel like I passed him, but I could be wrong. I see a lot of our former kickers here. Um, where's Chuck Vaughn at? Oh, he's way down here, 47. Okay, so 46 to 50. Not a very wide spread there at all. That's pretty interesting. Uh, punting. Uh, we'll just check out the average, which Marquette King leading the way by a mile. Sam Martin, Appalachian State at number two, baby. I love it. Uh, kick returns. Uh, average, 30.7 for Paris Albert. A lot of guys doing a great job in the return game this year. Three touchdowns returned from Paris Albert and Sammy Watkins. Uh, two for the rookie buyers. And a few people listed here with one. Quite a few people, I should say. Punt returns. There's nobody near Chase Cross here. Actually, Gio, Gio Bernard's kind of right near him. Uh, punt return touchdowns. Two for Bernard. One for Cross. And then, once again, we're going to see quite a few people here with one. Guys, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash that like button for this season. It really does help me out a lot. And I will see you guys next video as we examine the wild card matchups as well as the yearly awards. Later.